All right, gang, Professor McElroy here. We're gonna get started now. Week three, VizCom, Visual Communications and Design. Uh, good job so far on the first couple of weeks. Thank you for doing last week online. Uh, made a little trip up to Tennessee with the family and got out of the flat, barren heat of Florida and did the 12 hours up to the mountains, which were hot, but not that hot. It was like 85 during the day and like 65 at night, but low humidity. So that was nice. Uh, being a Southwest Florida guy for the last 20 years, we lit a fire in the front yard in the fire pit, even though it was 68 degrees outside to do s'mores because to us, that was kind of cool compared to the 77 at night here. So it was nice to get away, but good job. We're into learning module three, uh, covering the InDesign process. Our out of book is a poster design this week. So I thought I would spend some time this week. Everyone's doing great on the step-by-step -step and the basic projects in the book. Whether you got 2018 or 2020 or 2021 uh, books, it's not a big deal. Take a look at the topics that we're covering in the chapter assignments, because as they jump from one edition to the other, they, they kind of reorganize the chapters. They never introduce any new topics. They just kind of change the projects and change the process, the order of the chapters. So if you see a project that you did last uh, session, you can give that to me. Just make sure that you take a look at the, the outcomes for the chapter that it got moved to so that we kind of cover all of our bases here. We're in the third section, the third session of what I call this like triptych of graphic design, graph sign one, two, and visual communication. So we're covering the basics here. I like in the third session to do more of the process of design more than the step-by-step -step little granular skills uh, that we're covering. So this week, I'm gonna spend a little time, probably about an hour, hour and 15 minutes going through the creative process for our out of book project, just to kind of cover topics we've covered in other classes, cover processes that might have been ones that we did little pieces of, but maybe not all the pieces of, just to kind of connect some dots to the process I go through when creating any kind of visual communication solution. So uh, with that being said, scroll down real quick to chapter three, uh, uh, learning module three. We have three ch chapter book assignments if you're in uh, book 2021 uh, versus 2018, just kind of check the topics, uh, kind of reference the chapters and uh, cover those four chapter assignments. That's, I think maybe it's a total of two or three hours worth of work. It's not a lot, but it covers some of the more granular skills in InDesign. Remember it's a container program. So we're placing pictures, we're placing text and we're composing in InDesign. I'm gonna use InDesign for my kind of how I do things process for this week. Uh, even though the output, the final project we're creating could in theory be created solely in Illustrator, it's a really good vector-based tool. And because we'll be doing logos and text and shapes and basic vector graphics, we could compose this entire thing in Illustrator. I would like you for your out of book assignment to make sure that you're composing your elements in InDesign. So that's why I'm gonna do that tonight. Uh, and remember that if we have to manipulate any imagery or anything, Photoshop should be touched before we bring it into InDesign, just to make sure that we're using the tools that are best suited. I'll actually probably open up an EPS file in Illustrator and make sure it's an AI, convert it to an AI, kind of make sure it's vector the way I want it, and then bring it into InDesign. And I think posters are the ultimate design solution, single-sided, 11 by 17, 18 by 24, whatever the proportions are that you're doing for your particular client or your particular output. Uh, and it's simple visual communication. So you gotta have a concept, you gotta take that concept and develop it, and you've gotta bring that concept in with some elements, typically textual elements, in order to connect the dots of the visual into a complete message. I love poster design. The minute I was in school and I learned even the basic skills of what graphic design was all about at the time, commercial art, whatever you want to call it, I immediately started working at my university, designing every flyer, poster, every one-sided thing, t-shirts that I could possibly do for any event that was taking place. So we had concerts all the time on campus. I designed all the posters for all the entertainment that came to campus, uh, which was cool because then I got them all the bands to sign all my posters because that's what I created uh, when I was at school. And they give me free tickets and let me go backstage and all that. So it was a lot of fun. But posters, they're near and dear to my heart. I love creating them. Uh, so that'll be our out of 
out a book project for this week. And we'll spend a little time on my process, how I do it, right? And if you're working through your learning module three and you stumble upon something interesting, cool, a video, an image, something that really inspires you, don't forget, you've been doing a good job about it, but make sure you share it in the topic share. That way uh, your classmates can kind of see what you're stumbling upon, what you're seeing uh, as you go through the process that we're all going through. I really like that as a process for students to kind of engage in each other and get a little, at least a little chatter going, even if they're not commenting, they're at least thinking about it as we share. The summer's kind of a little bit slower for us traditionally, so uh, it's not as much uh, bigger cohorts engaging kind of stuff, uh, but I still want to keep the process going and keep us kind of interchanging and interacting. Uh, we only have a few in this session, uh, so we just want to make sure that we're kind of engaged and kind of talking to each other. So let's go to the out of book project and let's just take a look at our, our poster assignment uh, for this week because I want to spend a little time on my process, my thought process as it relates to uh, kind of visual communication, graphics, textual elements, how I come up with the concepts, kind of how I apply them to solutions. A one-sided 11 by 17 solution is by far the easiest thing you'll have to do. Uh, postcards, uh, two-sided or one-sided business cards. Think about things that just have text and images and they can communicate one single message in a way that engages the consumer, the audience, and gets them to act upon that process. And that's what we're trying to do as visual communicators. We're, gonna, we're trying to communicate a message, uh, build a brand, get people to believe in what we're trying to sell, whether it's a product or service. Uh, and there's no easier thing than a single-sided solution. Uh, oftentimes, ad agencies, marketing departments, they build entire campaigns based on single-sided solutions, whether they're uh, web banners or whether they're uh, postcards they mail out or advertising campaigns or posters in many cases, it's all single-sided. Remember, images and text to communicate a message. And we've talked about the reverse S and two-thirds and one-thirds, the rule of the thirds. We talked about visual hierarchy, background, middle ground, and foreground before. So we've kind of talked the elements of the process. We talked about creative briefs. We filled one out in a previous class. So you kind of figure out who the who, what, where, when, why, and how is and that process. So with all of those elements kind of already wrapped in to the thought process, let's talk about the actual process I go through when I'm creating something like a poster design, right? So we're doing an 11 by 17 poster. I want it to be like a human rights or some kind of topic that engages so that we have a definitive thing we can talk about. It's a lot easier when you have a definitive topic a passion, an element. You know, if you're selling jeans, it's real easy because you're creating a poster and the image is around the material, the fashion, uh, the fit, the name, that sort of thing, right? But nothing is more powerful than social movement of some kind in order to kind of get people to engage and react. So it's a really easy topic. So I thought I'd do Doctors Without Borders, right? Because that is a topic that is more relevant than ever in today's day and age of pandemics and viruses and things where people need to help others. It's a social initiative, right? Uh, humans helping humans. So Doctors Without Borders is a really good one. Amnesty International, uh, One, Salvation Army, Army uh, Salvation Army, Goodwill. I mean, all these things are activist oriented, uh, human rights oriented. If there's an organization on here that's not listed, but it's one you've heard of, maybe you're in, involved in, or you would like to be involved in, or you like the process of, please just send me an email. I'm up to any kind of humanist type of organization, ones that people helping other people. And so there's everything from St. Jude. I mean, the list is long and distinguished of human type of organizations. So we actually partner with Goodwill at Hodges and we have, uh, we have classrooms in some of the main Goodwill buildings, locations around kind of Southwest Florida, where we offer some online class opportunities and things like that for the community that can't get here. So we kind of already have a relationship with Goodwill. Uh, but if there's one you're interested in, please feel free, send me an email and we could talk about it. We're doing a 11 by 17 design, that's it. Images and text, all of which will be derived 
from research, right? So we got to look at the website. We got to take a look at what's going on. We got to do all of those things. So for me, when I'm getting into the creative process, the very first thing I think about is format, right? It's 11 by 17. Uh, it's a poster and we're in the InDesign learning module. So I wanna do InDesign as my container program that I bring all my elements in. So I'm gonna go into InDesign. I'm just gonna create new. And I'm gonna go in and set up my document. So you can kind of see how I work, my process, my thought process. We're doing print. We're doing a tabloid piece of paper because that's 11 by 17. I'm gonna switch it to inches just so that you kind of get the process of uh, what's going on here. Uh, I'm going to actually uh, add a 0.25. So I'm going to do 11.25 because I'm going to add a little bit of a bleed, 17.25. I like to add mine specifically to the document instead of going down here into the bleeds and slugs and adding it down here. I actually like to add mine to the actual proportion of the document. It's normally an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. So you can do as little as 11.125 and 17.125, but I give myself a little extra room because there's uh, oftentimes I'm doing different lengths of bleeds into my document. So I'm gonna give myself kind of a big picture window to work inside of, but I am gonna do two pages and I'm gonna do non-facing pages. The reason I do two pages is because my first page is just for cataloging my process. Any little proportionate thumbnail sketches, anything with typography, color, any, any of my word association, any of the things I'm doing in my process. Because remember when I export, I file save as, I could always do it by page. So I don't have to show anyone what my page one looks like, but it's a catalog of my client needs so that I ever have to build another or build something different. I've already cataloged the elements I use to build uh, visual communication piece number one. That's really important because if eight years down the road, my client comes back to me and says, hey, I love that poster you created for me uh, for the uh, Doctors Without Borders. I love the color palette, the typography. I like the layout of it. I wanna convert that into a web banner. Uh, okay, well, I already had all the elements placed. It's a container program. I had the design built. I can easily add a new document and create my proportions for my web banner and import all of my elements into that document based on my first design. Don't just design one-offs, what we call one-offs, which means create the thing, delete all the elements that led me to that process, output the final element, and then move on. You want to make sure you have the originals. I spend a lot of time in my lectures talking about importing images and layers and keeping the originals and hiding those layers and importing new layers. You need to make sure you have a root directory folder, something that the client has foldered where you put all of the elements you've used, everything from Pantone color to typography, everything. So that if you ever have to build something else, very few times do you build a design for a client and they never ask you for anything else. Typically, if you build something for the client and they like it, they're gonna come back over and over and over again. I have a client from 2003 that has been bought and sold twice since I started working with them. I designed the original boxes for all the products they sold. And to this day, because I built their brand, including web and multimedia, animations, print designs, their logo, they still come back to me, even though they've been sold twice because my name is attached to all the files, they, they always come back to me. Well, if I didn't know the font I used, the color process, any of the things I did, it would be a lot harder to keep their campaign, their style, their look, the things they like going and going over the course of 20 years. I mean, it's been 20 years. So it's really good, even though creative people tend to not be organized, Make sure you have a client folder inside your products. You build directories, things that you can track and catalog and build them in a process that if you ever have to go back, you have original images, original artwork, the font, the Pantone colors you use, that process so that you can look in your folder and immediately go back. And it's as if you were back to the day you designed your original piece and you can keep building on. So even though we're only doing one poster, if I decided for the final, I wanted you to add another poster, you would have all the elements in the process you went through the thumbnails that you did for build number one, 
So that build number two would be a lot easier. If you're starting from ground zero every single time, remember time is money. And I bill clients based on the projection of hours that it requires for me to build a project. So if the client gives me the images and gives me the type and the basic gist of what they want, then I may bill them four hours worth of work at $125 an hour. Once I do that process, it may actually take me five, five and a half hours, but I estimated about four hours, uh, roughly $500, $600. Uh, if it takes me a little bit longer, I do it because I know that if I capture my process with them, what they like, what they don't like, the edits I made, that when they come back to ask for project number two, I can estimate that based on the standard amount of time it typically takes me to create something. And I'm actually gonna win on the other end because I cataloged all my process that it may be the next project is a 10 hour billable thing, right? $125 an hour, we're talking about 1200 bucks. Uh, but I only it only took me seven hours to do it, even though it's a 10 hour job because I cataloged my process and I kind of knew what the client wanted. Right. You're always trying to get to A to Z, what the client was requesting and what they love. The quicker you get to A to Z, the more you, in, es in essence, put in your pocket based on the process. So you just want to make sure that you're very organized with the process so that you catalog everything. OK, so we're going to go and we're going to open up InDesign and you're going to notice that I have two pages, right? I have two pages, a page there and a page there. My page number one is just for directory information, the client name, the, uh, the images, concepts, the thumbnails, uh, the word association, all the things I do with a client to kind of get me going. Sometimes I do this on paper first. If I'm meeting with a client in person, I do it on paper first. I meet with the client. I could I transfer it to the program I'm using. Typically, it's an InDesign or an Illustrator environment. Sometimes it's Photoshop. And I do my process there so that I have it digitized. I've gotten pretty good, though. I take my iPad for a lot of stuff now. So I just doodle it down in uh, Adobe Draw, Adobe Illustrator, and then I just save it to the cloud. And then I take that file, which is an Illustrator file, and I drag it from the cloud and I put it in my client directory folder. So I have everything in the same place. So I've digitized a lot of this process, uh, but we're going to do it in InDesign because it's the program that we're using for our final output. So the first thing I like to do is I just am going to go ahead and throw uh, Doctors Without Borders. And I'm just going to catalog the top of this document with the thing that I'm working on, right? So I got to make sure that I have the list down. I'll make it pretty good size just so that I can make sure that, remember, no one's ever going to see this. It's mine. It's just the thing I'm using in order to catalog my process, right? Page number one, no one's going to ever see. It's my document. It's the thing I'm working on, the thing that kind of keeps me uh, kind of in a process, right? Everything is best done if you do a process and do it over and over again. Even if it's a bad process, if you do it over and over again, eventually you'll get good at it. So I'm a big believer in the process of creating anything, whether it's laying floors, whatever. I lay floors in every house I've ever owned. I was terrible the first time I did it. And now I have a process. So I am much better, much quicker uh, than I ever was at the beginning. So, okay. So we have Doctors Without Borders. Uh, I got to go back into my uh my file here because i gotta copy this web address because i want to open it up and make sure that i have uh the information i need right this is all of the stuff about doctors without borders so the very first thing i do is i open it up uh let's take a look at this it's red and white for the most part it's kind of like red cross so i'm going to go into my illustrator file and this is where i'm going to start taking notes or my indesign file i'm just going to start taking notes and i'm going to do red and white Let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, this is this is just my process for cataloging the stuff I need to do. So the first thing I'm doing is just doing research, right? This is just like a creative brief. So we got red and white. Uh, I'm going to go and see what words or phrases or things I can pull out of. So it's medical care where it needs where it's needed most. And so I'm just pulling out colors. I'm pulling out uh, catchphrases. I'm gonna look on their website real quick. And it looks like, let's see what they have. 
they have a sand, they have a, a sans serif typeface. So sans serif typeface, I want to make sure that I know these things as I'm kind of sans serif type. Even if the client doesn't tell me what the typeface is, I need to know these things uh, so that they have Facebook, they have Twitter, they have like every social media. So I'm just going to list uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. So Facebook, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So you're seeing the things that I'm cataloging because this is really important in my process. I need to know where I can go for what I need as I'm kind of collecting elements and learning things, right? So we've got all that going on. I'm just making sure they're the principles that drive us. Uh, these are kind of like our, uh, I'm gonna put those down. These are kind of like our outcomes or the, kind of the things we stand by. So I wanna list those because you never know which one of those words, you know, that's kind of their mission or their goal. So I wanna make sure that I have that. I'm putting a little break in between each element so I can separate those because this is all part of my process of what I'm thinking about. Uh, so let's just see if there's anything else. Traditionally, the home page is kind of like the billboard. So if it's on the home page, it's kind of important. You'll notice they actually abbreviate the language as MSF teams, right? So I'm actually gonna copy that because their abbreviations isn't DWB. I don't see that anywhere. So, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I list that because that might be important to the basic elements. So I've red and white, I've sans serif type, uh, medical care where it's needed most, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We are independent, impartial, and neutral. We're guided by universal medical ethics. Ethics is really important. We are committed to bearing witness. Uh, we are transparent and accountable. We are committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I'm just an MSF team, just kind of give you a basic idea of the list. Uh, so I'm just seeing here if there's anything that I want to make sure that I cover of during my process. I'm just researching. So I'm just getting the topics that I need so I can start referencing some of the elements I need. So I'm just problem solving basic elements right now. Just trying to figure out what they use, what their brand is like, like what, uh, what elements they lean towards, just basic information. Uh, so I got the gist here, Doctors Without Borders. Uh, I do want to see something here. Uh, I'm going to now make my word list because this is kind of how I dream and I problem solve. Uh, so I'm going to do a word list here because it's really important to start connecting visuals with images and text. Like what do I, so I'm going to do doctors or slash uh, medical as my word list topic. So I'm going to go uh, doctors or medical. I'm going to make that, let's make that 24 so I can see it on my word list. So doctors and medical, and I'm going to do shift copy. And then I'm going to do uh, travel or slash global, right? So these are the two things that really jump out in my mind working for this particular client that I think comes forward kind of in a branding standpoint, right? They're medical. These are people that heal, doctors. And it's without borders, which means it's global, which means they travel. These two elements are really critical into the branding process of, uh, of this particular organization, right? It's really important that they are medical licensed people that cover things around the border, right? So we wanna make sure that those elements are covered in our process. I'm gonna center my word list here just because it makes my word list a little bit easier uh, if I have them centered. So now for me, I've met with the client, I've gotten the gist of what they're looking for, what they engage in. So now I'm gonna take these two terminologies and I'm gonna start listing everything that, uh, that comes to mind. So I'm gonna put steth for stethoscope. I'm gonna put uh, needles. I'm gonna do uh, drugs or I'm gonna do heal. I'm gonna do, uh, they, they travel with their stuff. So I'm gonna do like briefcase. And I'm just listing words that doctors or medical personnel would have. So white clothing, 
uh, let's do uh, germs. Let's do uh, heal, uh, health. Let's do uh, what else with doctors? Uh, mask. Uh, let's do. Um, so we got stethoscope, needles, drugs, healing, briefcase, white clothing, germs, health, mask. The obvious things like surgery, uh, bed, uh, bones, blood. What else for doctors? Uh, sterile, because we need to make sure that it's clean. Uh, let's see here, stethoscope, needles, drugs, healing, briefcase, white clothing, germs, health, mask, surgery, uh, beds. Uh, bones, blood, sterile. Uh, I'm thinking of today's day and age with our pandemic, what's most important in the hospitals. I mean, we could put hospital or triage or something like that. Um, let's do, uh, I don't know, booster, because we're talking about booster shots and things like that. Uh, that's a pretty good list to get me started here. So let's go over to Travel and Global, and we're going to do things like uh, World. We're going to do things like Passport. We're going to do things like um, uh, this is actually briefcase too because it's travel or global. Let's talk about um, mm, eth ethnicity. Uh, let's talk about. Um, uh, equator, planes, bus, cars, all the things that have to do with travel, um, stamps, because they stamp your passport, um, security, uh, roadway, cities, uh, rural, suburbs, Travel and global world, passport, briefcase, ethnicity, uh, equator, planes, buses, cars, stamps, security, roadways, cities, rural, suburbs, weather, rivers, mountains. All right. All right. So let's see what we have here. This is a couple of the wordplay word lists. Uh, I call it creative cross-referencing, where I'm listing a couple of key elements that are part of my product or service initiative. Sometimes they call them campaign elements, and I'm starting to do my creative process of kind of word playing the things that come to mind based on these campaign elements or these branding elements in order to create visual kind of solutions, kind of You'll notice that a lot of creative people, whether it's authors or artists or whoever, designers, they talk about that sometimes what their messaging ends up being, they come up with in the shower, in a car. They have uh, lots of times uh, songwriters have a notepad with a pen that they leave by the bed. And if they wake up in the middle of the night, they drop a phrase down or a word or artists will sometimes sketch something out on a piece of paper to go back to later. Like this is the process. This is that creative process of hashing out the client needs based on a structural element of processing kind of how you create visual solutions, right? This is my process, which is really a standardized process that a lot of creative people do in different ways. Sometimes they call them visualization boards where they just, uh, it's the whole concept behind Pinterest, right? They're just images that people have pulled from the internet based on topics that may be driven by something someone's thinking about. You wanna remodel your bathroom, you type in white tile, you get all these images of white tile in different ways of delivery to inspire you in your creative process. The web has gotten really beautiful. Google image searches, you can find a lot of kind of inspiration in the searching world of multimedia that was once done by paper, right? And tearing out magazines and just looking for visuals that inspire. Okay, so I know it's Doctors Without Borders. I know they're red and white. It's medical care where it's needed most. I know they use block type or sans serif type. I know they're all over social media. I know they're ethical. 
I know they're uh, accountable. I know they're committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. I know they come in teams. I know it's medical traveling people or global doctors. So I now have these word phrases I've written down based on that. And so now this part of the process is where I start to connect visuals, where I start to kind of dream what I think this thing might be as a campaigning or a messaging uh, tool. And so let's just take a look at this. I'm gonna take my line segment tool and I'm gonna start connecting words from the left column to words to the right column. So you can kind of see my process for client creativity. I'll do this on my iPad meeting with them. I meet with a client for an hour or so. That hour is really vital to figuring out what they want, what they like, what their mission is, what they're interested in. And then when I'm done doing sign of word listing and writing down things that they say, I send them back and I say, okay, go out on the web and find everything you think that's visually good, everything that you're attracted to, everything that you like send me whatever it is, put it in a Word document, drag the images and save them somewhere and send them to me. Because then I really get an idea for white space, color palette, visual separation, what they think is good. Is it minimalist? Is it cluttered? Is it modern? Is it traditional? Like what do they like? What typography do they gravitate towards? That really helps me get from A to Z a lot quicker. If I know the gist of what the client needs, I'm good at design. I can create what they want very quickly. But this is the process for gathering the elements to figure out exactly what they want. And lots of times clients don't know what they want. So I need to help them. I help them with wordplay, word association, visual cues, the things that they already innately like, or they have built upon with their business already that I can tie into and make better, right? I have my own style, my own personality. I do things my own way. But there's a process and you want to use a standardized process to get from A to Z. All right. So I'm just going to start connecting some word association here. Right. Uh, so stethoscope and I'm just connecting things so I can see what things look like visually. So if I did stethoscope and roadway, I can immediately see that the stethoscope kind of is a U shape and it kind of trickles down. And so I could see how that stethoscope could channel into a road as a visual to connect the two things that we're trying to do here, right? A road could really easily taper into a stethoscope visually and be kind of an interesting visual. Uh, so let's do briefcase and passport. There's no reason a briefcase can't open up and the inside of the briefcase be all the stamps of all the countries that the doctors have been to or helped in. And so I now see a visual of some kind of briefcase closed or open with stamps on it, passport stamps, something like that in order to kind of create this doctors without borders. Maybe the briefcase is a specific kind of briefcase because doctors used to use them in the olden days and there's a shape or a pattern or a thing. I'm just doing the visuals right now, right? I'm just doing the visuals now, what they might look like that I can word associate with and sometimes it's two words to one thing. So briefcase, passport, and stethoscope. So what if the briefcase was opened up, it had a stethoscope in it, and the interior of the briefcase had stamps from all the places around the world they have helped, or some of the places around the world they have helped. So I'm using the process in order to kind of try to connect some dots into what I might want to build as a visual campaign. All right, so we have, mask is always an interesting word. So what if I had mask and some kind of stamps, right? So it's everyone knows masks nowadays because we've been wearing them because of the pandemic, which seems like forever. What are we on two and a half years now or something where it's been some kind of something going on in the world where we had to protect ourselves? I mean, it's crazy to even think it's been two and a half years, probably been three years by now, uh, really in a realistic world. Um, and every day you see in the news, some kind of something, but uh, we're plugging through and I think we're getting back to some level of normal. Uh, my wife had to go see her doctor. She had her annual checkup and it still was mandatory masks. So even though most places are like, hey, if you feel like you need to, 
uh, the doctor's office still mandatory masks. So she had mask in her car, she had to put on in order to go in for a checkup. So we're kind of still in that world. So Doctors Without Borders is kind of interesting because I don't think we're going to be out of what isn't some level of hypersensitivity for quite a while. Because think of third world countries, think about countries or, or people that don't have access to the same medical care. There's always going to be some kind of something. And the kind of the weird thing is, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's really brought to the forefront that this isn't the only thing, right? There's always something in the world that is affecting people in some way, whether just minor or something major, but it's happening. So this kind of, for good or bad, has brought forward to the front that we should be more aware of cleanliness, I guess. There should be can cleaning stations, I think places we touch a lot of things because even though our body can fight most of it, it doesn't mean it's good to be having some kind of level of whatever going through your body, right? You go and you eat at a restaurant and they didn't you know, clean the food or the counters or something and you end up getting some kind of food bug. Um, we, I think we need to be kind of aware of health and things like that. So let's do uh, health and world. So I'm just connecting words so I can start to get some visuals of what might be interesting. We have germs and we have maybe germs and rural. Like, what does that look like, right? A farm image of some kind with some general strand germ looking thing. I mean, remember a lot of these words, if you create this kind of favicon world, this iconography, these emojis of the world we live in, it's not too hard to do a germ emoji. And people know what a germ emoji is. They're like, ew, there's the germ, right? And it's not hard to do rural or city. City's a bunch of buildings next to get themselves. Uh, rural might be a little barn or it might be a little uh, hay bale or something. Like there's different ways to emoji con or emoji the concept of these elements in a simple way, right? Visual communication is graphic. We live in a world of environmental graphics, a symbol that tells you something. I finally got my little pickup truck that I ordered a year ago that they've been having supply issues and they just built, I finally got the thing, it's a hybrid. When I turn the thing on, icons appear all over the thing. Amazingly, I know what most of them mean just because we live in a world of icons, like everything is an image now. So it's got CarPlay and all my little icons appear on the dash and it's a hybrid. So when you start it, it's electric. So there's no engine start. It just says you're ready to drive in the cluster panel. Like, okay, I guess the car's running, right? I got to drive it now. So we live in a world of icons. So just think of this word play or this word list being uh, a left list of images and a right list of images and how we connect those two things into one graphic. And we do that with scale and proportion and overlap and all the elements that make those things go together, right? So we have, uh, we have white clothing, think of like a doctor or a nurse's suit kind of thing. And so what does that look like uh, when you're dealing with doctors and you're dealing with uh, cars or buses, right? So you can immediately think of like an ambulance or something, or I don't even know what doctors with boards do. They just show up in a Toyota and hop out with their briefcase and some sterile equipment and they start helping, giving shots, drawing blood, checking broken bones. Like, you know, what does that look like? That might require a little research, but the word play has allowed me to have a direction for word searching, for image searching, for inspiration, right? I've already got something kind of going here. And so the visuals are cued for my word search, which will help me. So what about a hospital uh, and a hospital and in lots of place, places like, uh, it looks a little bit different, right? Because a hospital can be temporary, like a tent or a triage when there's a, emergency of some kind and you have to kind of you know do what you have to do kind of winging it a little bit right so what does a triage look like when it's a hospital in a briefcase you know what elements are in there is the big pill shape is it a needle is it a mask is it how do these elements interact in a way that kind of tells a story so someone doesn't have to read the words, right? With a poster, you want the images to tell the story. You don't wanna have them have to read words. So you'll actually notice in the uh, 
image. I mean, look at the graphic. I mean, very simple graphic so that you don't even have to read this stuff down here, right? You don't even have to read it. The graphic says it all. So that's why this is so important of a process. You need for the visual, shocking or not, uh, to be a simple message, something that's caught very quickly. If they're driving in a car and they look over and it's attached to a building on a light pole, they need to be able to process exactly what is happening quickly. Posters are often most powerful in like two color or three color or simple color palette so that it's bold and graphic, right? Black and white, think black and white, really graphic. So as I'm word playing, I'm thinking of elements that are graphical in nature that really tell a story, right? So I don't know, needles, what does needles look like when you're dealing with uh, needles uh, around the world? So you know that some needles now are needleless, so it's pressurized. So they actually just put it on your arm and it shoots air and it shoots the drug right through your skin. I've actually had that more times than not uh, lately uh, if medication was needed or something or there's a little procedure that has to be done. They just use that pressurized thing anymore. Actually, my kids are more scared of the pressurized thing than they actually are the needles and they're teenagers now. The minute they hear the snapping of that thing like a rubber band on your skin, they freak out, even though I think it hurts less. I mean. They're boys. I mean, they swung a towel at each other and kind of snapped it and hit their brother with it, you know, so, but they're freaked out by the sound. It's needleless and it psh, sounds like a snap and it kind of burns like you were kind of snapped with a rubber band, right? So needles look different around the world than they do now. What about a needle turned on its side and inside the tube of the needle is like images of a certain country or you know, there's lots of things you can do in the tube of a needle that would be a very interesting graphic uh, to tell a story for Doctors Without Borders. So you got to think of the medical side and then think of the world. What if it's a needle and it's the tube and it's kind of pulled back so you could see where the medicine would be, but in there are all the country stamps inside of it, right? That's an interesting visual. Medicine around the world. Right, so I'm starting to get visuals based on my wordplay. So I think I've got a few things here that will really help me kind of in my process of what I'm trying to do here. So I've got my wordplay going, I've got some basic elements going here. So now on page number two, just so you can see my process, page number two, I'm gonna draw some basic thumbnails. So this is the proportion in essence of 11 by 17. So I'm just gonna drop that in the middle and then I'm gonna move a couple over and I'm going to start blocking in what I think element wise. So I'm just going to drop those in and then I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to do about nine thumbnails just so I have a basic gist of what I got going on here. And so I've blocked in kind of nine here. And so here are my basics. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see, you know, this isn't the basic proportion of, you'll notice I did it in portrait, not landscape, because I'm thinking portrait for, uh, for So I've got my proportion correct. If I was doing landscape, I would sketch my thumbnails out in landscape so I know exactly, you know, what I'm doing here. So the very first thing is I'm just going to draw a box in the middle because most people think, well, graphic in the middle, maybe call to action along the top, and maybe my logo down the bottom, right? So this is a simple thumbnail of what my scale and proportion would look like, just thinking the process through. Uh, that's interesting, but you know, sometimes the visual is best towards the top. It's really telling a story. And then maybe my call to actions in the middle here, and maybe my logo and kind of branding is towards the bottom. And you're gonna notice sketch number two, thumbnail number two has got the same three elements, but they're scaled completely differently based on what my visual hierarchy, the elements I wanna create and the position I wanna put them in. And so I'm just gonna thumbnail nine sketches with putting the image elements in a certain place, putting the call to action in a certain place and putting kind of the branding part 
of my design in a certain place. Notice that I am trying to do the reverse S. So my call to action typically maybe kind of in that middle top part, my uh, focal point in the reverse S traditionally is kind of in the middle, but you're noticing I'm not splitting anything in half. I'm still trying to do the one thirds proportions. And so now maybe, I don't know, maybe my, my image, my focal point is on the right hand side. Maybe my call to action just kind of runs along the left hand side here. And maybe my branding runs entirely along the bottom. And so I'm just trying to problem solve some of my elements. Okay, so now that I've done that, maybe I need my image to be the bottom two thirds. Maybe my call to action runs along the top and maybe my branding and social media is in between it, kind of sandwiched in between it. So I'm trying to problem solve where these elements are gonna go in my poster design. Okay, maybe my image is the entire page. My call to action is in the middle and maybe my branding is towards the bottom here, right? So I'm just creating my elements. I might go as far sometimes as to do maybe my image is, is in the kind of the cyan color. So sometimes I'll do this. And so just so I can color coordinate my elements, just so you can kind of see what this thing looks like. And I definitely want my branding. I'm gonna make that box black just so that you can see. And so I'm just filling in my elements just to give you a really good idea of kind of the visual process that goes through first a little research, then a little wordplay, and maybe my call to action is just magenta. I'm just using basic uh, four color process to block in my elements. So you can see the process I go through when I'm trying to problem solve. First my concept and then my layout, right? I'm doing a layout now for each of my elements. All right, so now, so let's figure out, so copy and paste. I'm just gonna start moving my elements here. Maybe I need the image on the left-hand side. Maybe I need the call to action elements or my messaging running here. And then maybe my branding is down the bottom of this one. So you can see, I'm just kind of create my basic. So I got image top, image bottom. I'm gonna make this image go all the way to the edge just so that I can mimic my image top just to kind of problem solve what I got going on here. All right, all right, we got that. Uh, so let's see. So I've got six thumbnails here. Actually, I feel pretty good about the six thumbnails. So I'm not gonna go to nine because I got, I got a couple of what I think are pretty viable layouts for 111 by 17. Because remember, I'm building a template. This template is something I'm going to use over and over again. So I want to make sure that whatever my elements are, that I've got a process that I can modify or manipulate over and over again. And I'm actually going to create these containers in full scale when the time comes so that I have it. Okay, so I'm going to add my third page. So I've got page number one is my wordplay. Page number two is my thumbnails. And I'm actually gonna remove these bottom three thumbnails. Now I've got to go in and problem solve uh, Pantone or swatch colors that I'm gonna use as my primary colors and like typography. So let's go back into my uh, Doctors with Borders. And you're gonna notice it's basically black, white, and red. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna do a screenshot of the logo. So I just did print screen. I could probably drag the logo off too and drop it if I needed to. Uh, but I'm just gonna kind of dump that in here. And I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do file place and let's find the desktop and here's my logo. I'm just gonna drop it in the bottom here. The reason I did that was because I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna go in with my eyedropper 
and I'm going to grab that color, right? So let's add it to my palette. And so let's go in and you're going to notice now, look at what it did. I actually hit the button twice by mistake. Uh, I used my eyedropper and it pulled the entire color palette of my logo. So now look at that. So now when I go to my swatches, I have a color theme already generated based on my logo, which means it's color, it's uh, tint colors or it's tint shades and it's black. So I have a really good palette here. So let's see if there's any other color palettes or color sequences they use on this site. It's red, white, and black. If I go into any of my pages, do they change color palette at all? So let's go into our work. Mm, what we do. Still black and white. Let's go to where we work. Anything country based, still black and white. Don't have anything that's changed in the color palette. Let's take uh, our work in focus. No adjusting of color palette at all. So let's just see who we are. I mean, they have introduced no other colors, man. They are sold on red, black, and white. There is nothing here. Well, that's good to know. My, my design needs to be black, white, and red. I can do a shade of gray because there are some gray scale. There are some gray boxes. You do have this kind of weird color here that I'm not sure what's going on. So I'm gonna screenshot that because the footer kind of has this weird color. And so I'm gonna place it. Let's see if I can. So let's do that. I don't know what that little color swatch is. So let's drop that in there. And I'm gonna eye drop it. And so now you'll see whatever this color is, this interesting little shade of whatever. I'm gonna actually drop it in my color theme one so I can trash color theme two. So now I have pretty much all the colors I need, right? I've got my background color, which is the footer color. I have my logo and I have uh, the color scheme for my logo. So I've got everything I need. This is in essence a one, two, really a three color job. Remember the paper's white. So I have white and black. So black is my first color. I have red with these two tint variations of the red. And I have this kind of weird creamy color, which is their footer color. So now what do I have to figure out? The last thing I have to figure out is typography, but I gotta be honest with you. They have this type, which is a serif and they have standard block type. So let's do a little trick here. Let's see if I can view the page source and see if I can find the font in here. So I right clicked on my web page and it gave me the site page source. So now all I'm doing is going in to see if anywhere it mentions the font that it's using on this particular page. Yes, it's a cheat, but if I didn't know the client, this is the easiest way to figure out what we have going on. Sometimes it's embedded in a style so it's a little hard to see what's going on, but not everyone's super smart. So sometimes they put it right out there so you can see what is going on. So I'm just taking a look real quick to see if I can find anything that jumps out. Let's do edit find. Let's type in the word font. All right, so let's see what it says. Here we go, font family, Oswald, font family bitter, and font family, a standard sans typeface. So let's just see, what's the last one? Yep, that's it. So needless to say, I don't have any of those fonts. Bitter, PT sans, and Oswald. So if I was meeting with a client, I would say, hey, can you give me the font, Oswald, PT sans, and bitter? They used italic for bitter. It looks like it's standard sans serif. It looks like they did a line weight of 200 on Oswald. So I got the basic ideas. So if I was doing this for my client, I would now go into my thumbnails. I already have my color swatches, so I'm gonna make those in a minute, but I'm gonna do font. 
And let's zoom in here a little bit so you can see what's going on. And so I'm cataloging what I'm doing for my client. So let's go up here and do like 24. So there it is. So font is Oswald Bitter PT plus Sans. So those are my typefaces. So now I have them cataloged so I know exactly what typeface I'm gonna use or request from my client. And I like to do this now, not everyone does it now because it's saved in your thumbnails in your swatches, but I'm gonna go in and drop my swatches in here just so I have them as reference. And so I'm gonna drop my first one and I'm gonna bring over my second one. And then I'm going to bring my third one. This is really good from an organizational standpoint, right? You can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm listing my type. I made my thumbnail sketches. I'm gonna make a copy of these because this needs to be black. This needs to be beige. And I even go as far in my process, even though it's white. So I'm gonna put a border on this one so you can see that it's white. So, okay, let's make it a little thicker. Let's make it black. All right, so there it is. All right, so now you'll notice page number one is my client name. It's anything I could gleam off of web pages, print ads, anything the client might have gave me as reference. Typically it's a URL that they give me as reference. So I'll put the, let me close the source here now that you saw what I did. <laughs> I'm gonna copy the Doctors Without Border URL and I'm gonna drop it in right under my name. So there it is. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Now, now that I've got There it is. All right, so now that I have my name, my URL, the basic gist I got off the website, I created my two words, made my word list based on my two basic categories. I did my cross-referencing. I went down and did my thumbnail sketches. I don't care if they already gave me a template of exactly what they want me to do. I still do a sketch of how I could use those elements, even in the template they gave me with a little different scale and proportion. So even if they give me a fixed template, I may thumbnail out three or four or five sketches where in their template, I still scale the elements a little bit differently. I overlap them a little bit differently. I interact with them a little bit differently. If I move this little sketch right here and I overlap this box, you'll notice the layout looks a little bit different, right? So if I scale this down a little bit, and I overlap the box, that's a totally different interaction of elements versus moving the elements separated, which is what that is. So I thumbnail it out. I then go to my fonts or any typography elements that are inspiring. I do my color palette. I do that through research and importing. Notice that I drop the color theme in down there by doing the eyedropper over here to pull out my color theme. And now, so I've got two pages of research now I start the elements of my design. So I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. So let's see what my concept's gonna be. Uh, so let's go back to my wordplay. Let's see if anything sticks out to me uh, as of interest, right? I think I'm gonna do briefcase with uh, some concept of stamps, briefcase and stamps or needles, needles and Needles and world. Needles and world is kind of interesting. Needles and cities, needles and rural, needles and mountains and rivers. Boy, I get a lot of visuals because the needle holds stuff, right? It holds the medication. There are so many things you can put in the vial of the needle that could be really interesting. The needle itself could be something, right? The point of the needle of itself, the needle itself, could be a river, 
right? So the needle bends a little bit. The needle itself could be so many things. So I'm definitely doing needle and something related to world. I think that would be an interesting graphic. So what does that mean from a layout standpoint? Needle and world. Well, the needle is gonna be the big graphic. So if the needle is the big graphic and I can either put it vertical or lay it on its side. If you put it vertical, people are gonna think you're trying to stab me with it. So I think I need to at least put it horizontally. So if I put it horizontally in my layout, then I either have to put the call to action to the top or the call to action to the bottom and the branding vice versa. Okay, so I have my elements now. I have my concept. I have my basic layout. I have my typography and color palette. All right, so page number three is my design, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I need a needle and I need something that has to do with passport, travel, globe, thing. So let's go out and find some elements, right? Now that I know my palette, I know the basic things I'm doing here. Let's see if I can't uh, pull that stuff in. Uh, so I want my needle to probably be some shade of this red. So I'll get to that in a minute. I also think I wanna make the background color that beigey color. So let's just do that right now. So I have the thing basically blocked in. So I'm gonna drop that in. Remember, it's got a bleed to it, so I already set that up. So I'm gonna do my color theme. I'm gonna drop in my background color. I don't wanna stroke, so I'm gonna make that zero. And so my background is that footer color, which is barely off-white. You can see it right here, it's barely off-white, but I think it's good for what I need. Uh, okay, so I think because it's a needle, I don't want it to be a photo, I want it to be a vector. I need it to be a vector graphic. I don't want it to be. And so let's go to Vectezy, right? We use Vectezy for graphics. Vectezy, let's type in needle. See what kind of images I get. Sewing needle. So let's, let's make this doctor needle or medical needle. Let's see what we have here. All right, so we got all kinds of cool stuff. Like, how do I want it? Do I want it to be more realistic? Do I want it to be a simple graphic? I think I'm gonna go with just a playful, simple graphic. And look at this, it already has briefcases and some of the other elements I was thinking of. And so this is gonna help me, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna drag this over to the desktop. Let's minimize that for a minute. I'm going to minimize this. And so I need to make a folder called Doctors Without Borders. Just so I have a folder for all the stuff I'm working on, right? Dump that in there. Dump this in there. Unzip my folder. Double click on that. I need the EPS file, right? Oh, it already has an AI file. That's great. I'm going to dump that in there. I don't need the other stuff because I'm gonna use the AI file. So let's do that. So I might as well open that up because I know it's gonna go in my image. And remember, I want an Illustrator file because it'll be nice and seamless. All right, so let's zoom that out. The only elements I need is that needle. So let's do that. Let's uh, rotate it on its side. And remember, I'm using it this scale. So I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit, make sure it fits in my document. So this is my basic needle. What do I got for color? Let's get rid of that. What do I got for a stroke? Is this a line weight? Nope, it's just an outline. That's fine. It's gonna be a little bit graphic, a little more graphic than I probably wanted, but it'll work for the lecture just because it's giving us the basic gist of what we got going on here. Actually, I'm gonna make this thing a little thinner in a stripes standpoint because I'm gonna ungroup it because I think it's a little thick. It's driving me a little bit crazy how thick it is. So let's do that. I'm gonna get light of that. I'm gonna modify this drawing just a little bit. Now that I have my basic elements, right? I'm just using this as a template just to give me my basic elements. I don't know how many lines I'm gonna need. Let's do four. Let's open up my alignment. Let's space them apart equally. 
drop this thing kind of in the middle. I don't know what this thing's gonna look like in the end. Interesting, look what the artist did. I don't think he knew exactly what he was doing. This thing is overlapped in the corners. So let's do this. I need to, I need to make this little, I'm just gonna draw right over the top of it. I'm just creating my own design based on the elements I have here. There we go. So the needle is a little bit better now. Uh, so let's do this. I'm gonna move it out of the way for a minute so I can select these things and copy them and then move this back up. And I'm gonna do edit paste in place and I'll put them where I need them. Okay, that's good enough. This needle's a little bit scary too, but I guess thicker is better than thinner because if it was really thin, you would think, oh my gosh, he's gonna stab me. Uh, all right, so let's save it. Uh, okay. And so I've got the first element for my poster. I've already got the background color, which you're gonna know. Oh, I wanna make it this color red. So let's, let's take the swatch. So what is the color? 092760, 092760. So let's go back in. Zero, 092. 76, and you'll notice I'm actually setting my color here. So there it is. And so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna draw a swatch here just so you can see I made my color. And so now I'm just gonna eyedropper that. I don't want any strokes. So now you can see I'm actually color matching the needle to my color palette. So that's why doing those swatches is important, right? So now I know exactly what the colors are I'm using. All right, so I can get rid of that now. So let's save that. So let's see what that color looks like on the background. So let's file place. Let's go into my Doctors Without Borders. Here it is. Ooh, there's my needle. So now you'll notice my color palette is matching beautifully. So I'm just rotating. Eh, I'm going to keep it upright. All right, so you can just get a gist of what my thing is looking like here. So now I'll immediately notice Hmm, I don't know if that layout's gonna work. That's brutal. So now I'm going to have to make this a little more dramatic because I actually want this thing to be like most of the page. Can I put it on an angle? Maybe. So let's put that, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm struggling with my design because I chose, I chose portrait instead of landscaped. When in reality, this thing actually is better, I think in landscape. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? I, I'm going to keep it portrait because that's what I sold you guys on when I started my lecture. So let's just make this thing like this. All right. So I need to make sure. So I'm actually going to go in here and hide my guides. And I'm going to hide my frame edges, just so you can see what it would look like in a printed form. So I hid my guides and hid my borders so it looks super clean now. Okay, so this is the beginning of my concept here. I got the right colors going, so that's good. I uh, got that going, okay. Um, so let's do, let's go back 
and we got to find our next image, right? So let me do passport because I need all these images. Passport. And look at all these interesting stamps. So now I need to, let's see whatever free stamps I can get with my passport. So this is cool, arrival, visa, departure. That's probably good enough for what I'm trying to do. So let's take this and let's download it. And you'll see my concept here in a minute. I actually think I could do a couple of elements with it too. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drag it over, put it on my desktop. I'm gonna close this because I'm only doing a kind of a simple concept lecture. So I don't need to go find any extra stuff. Let's double click that, unzip that file, double click here, grab my EPS file from the passports, dump it over there. And so now I need to open this up in Illustrator. And I need some of the passports. See, there's only like three elements here. Uh, ungroup. So let's get rid of that. Let's zoom out for a minute. I only need these three elements. So I need visa approved. I need the plane. I need arrival and I need departure. So let's get rid of this. Let's keep arrival. Let's keep departure and let's keep visa approved. So these are the three I'm going to use. So here they are. I need to make one of them black because we already know that black was a color in the design. Let's see what the other swatch colors are. So I need this one. So let's go into swatches. 07042 0. 070 0. 070 0. That can't be the right color. Let me go back to that real quick. Zero seventy forty two zero. Zero seventy forty two zero. There it is. So that's the color I need. So let's do visa approved. We'll do it in that color. The last color is super light. So I don't know. Let's see here. 04020. 04020. Zero. Zero, <sighs> Zero, 40, 20, zero. All right, that's super light, but I guess it'll work. So let's copy that. All right, so now I have my three stamps. I'm just gonna move them away from each other because I'm gonna crop them when I import it. The so file save as, we'll name it stamps. All right, go into our InDesign, scroll down to our design. Now, if I decided, no, I'm gonna keep the lines. All right, so let's place it. Let's place our stamps. So here they are. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let's do our display performance is high quality. That way we can see what we have going on here. I'm gonna blow this up, drop that in there. Then I'm gonna crop it. And copy and paste, move the other one down here. And then I gotta move this thing. Where's the other one? It's over here somewhere. There it is. Move that over. 
make sure we can see the whole stamp. And last but not least, oh, it's the last one. And I believe the last one is over here somewhere. There it is. These are approved. All right, so let's zoom out, see what my design is looking like here. I'm gonna make this thing big. The nice part about the design was they were already kind of on an angle. I'm just blowing them up now so you can really see them. And they're transparent, right? Because it's an Illustrator file. So I can make them as big as I need. And I still can see the needle behind it. All right, so now I need my call to action. Here's the beginning of my poster here. Let's do view uh, fit page and window so I can see exactly what's going on here. Hey, looking kind of nice. All right, so now I need, I need to go in. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto the website and see if I can find a call to action, right? We have all these statements from my page number one. Do any of these work? No, those are more the mission. So I wonder if there's anything in their social media pages. The teacher station gets a little hokey sometimes and doesn't let me open up social media pages. So let me see. Well, let's try Instagram and see if it doesn't block me. Day in the life of an ER supervisor. I'm looking to see if there's anything in the posts that might help me. Mm. I think I'm just gonna use I think I'm just gonna put this, kind of interesting. Whenever you write something in another language, it always kind of is cool. So let's see what it looks like. It's gotta be at least, at least 72. No, I don't need that. You can see my layout here. So the needle is gives a perfect left align if I wanted to do that. Let's go mark it down. View, fit page and window. All right. So now, is there a Twitter tag or something? So I have my needle. I could select these things together and figure out if I could rotate this thing. I don't know how well, maybe a little bit. So let's rotate a little bit to give it a little energy. I'm actually gonna group it because I have the image exactly the way I want it. All right, so that makes it interesting for my left align because it's no more left align. So I wonder if I can rotate this so it matches the alignment of the needle. All right, that looks good. All right, so do I need to center this? Mm, okay, I still have my hard left line there, so that's fine. All right, so now I have my image. I could actually make this image a little bigger, I think. I'm doing shift option to scale it proportionately from the center. All right, so here's the beginning of it. Oh, I got something going on here. All right, I got my kind of call to action, the name. And now I need. I need some kind of branding. So it's gotta be a social media tag or something. Cause this is really the name, even though it's also the call to action. So let's see if they have a social media tag. Let's see if there's anything. Let's do file open new. 
Doctors Without Borders. So let's find their Twitter because that's where you would find their social media tags. So let's find their, so let's see if anything hops up here. Do they, at MSF USA, at MSF USA. So that is their tagline. So that's gonna be my call to act. That's gonna be my branding. I'm just gonna drop that in there. And I'm gonna make it like it's kind of a thing that could have been anchored by the needle. All right, there we go. Let's move it down towards the bottom of the needle, just so that it directs their eye to it. All right, there we go. All right, I think I got everything I need. Got everything in my layout. I have my image. I have my uh, call to action and I have my branding. If I wanted to, I could place the logo, which probably wouldn't be a terrible idea, which is right here. And put my social media under it. And you'll notice I didn't go get a transparent version of the logo. So I think what I'll do is I'll just draw a white stripe down the bottom of the page here to anchor my logo. So let's paper, give it no border. All right, there we go. So I have my logo. I just gotta mess around with my logo a little bit now. So I can figure out the best place for it. Mm, I want it stacked. It's got to be stacked over here. All right, so let me save it. And we'll name it uh, Doctors Without Borders Poster 2022. I got to dump it in my folder. And remember, here's my layout. Now, I need to make sure that I package this thing. So now that I have it there. I'm just going to dump it. And now let me just minimize my other programs. So here is my zip file that has all my a PDF version of my poster. It has my InDesign file. It has all of my links and it has the fonts I used all right there. So I'm going to take that and dump that in my Doctors Without Borders. I only need the PDF, right? I only need the PDF that you created, but that's a really good best practice. So you'll notice page one has all of my preliminary thoughts. Page two has my thumbnail sketches, my color palette, my typography. And then page number three is my design. And you'll notice if you watch back my recording, how I balance uh, display performance, how I turned off frames so I could actually see my layout how I copy color palette colors from one software application to the other. So everything is very consistent of color palette and everything matches with the branding of the research I did on the web. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. We're at 8.05, that was about an hour and 30 minute lecture or so. That's kind of the window I always like to keep everything. Uh, so let's just go back to our, so I can close that. Let's go back to our out of book. And just remember, you're giving me one 11 by 17, and it should be an Illustrator file that you compose the poster in, and then you give me a PDF. Uh, let me know if you have any challenges in the InDesign chapter assignments as you're kind of plugging along. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what you produce. Uh, remember, if you submit a little bit early, I can critique your poster and give you a chance to do a resubmission if there's some tweaks I want you to do to it. And remember, next week is our final assignment, our final project. So I will post that Sunday night at midnight so you can start working a little bit early. Uh, if you want to Zoom, log in, or come to the classroom to give me a preliminary sketch or a preliminary concept or what you're working on, it's only Tuesday. 
of next week, which means you'll have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to finish your final design for me for your final project. Uh, so use next week as an open lab so you can share ideas, get feedback, get critiques, uh, and we'll kind of wind down the July session. All right, gang, have a good week.